Battle Royale games can often have you spend an immense amount of time looting and preparing for an ultimate showdown that never actually happens. Instead of getting into an intense firefight against another squad, you may just get sniped by someone you didn't see or do the sniping yourself. Darwin Project tries to fix that, managing to reverse the traditional balance of looting versus fighting with electric results. It introduces some interesting twists on the Battle Royale format to do that, but unfortunately their lasting appeal fizzles out far too quickly. The match is about to begin. Darwin Project tries extremely hard to be different from games like Fortnite or Apex Legends, despite the surface level similarities. Instead of around 100 people per match, there are only 10, which makes matches shorter but more intense. Instead of a circle closing around the map toward a totally random spot, this map's seven regions close off one by one, lending a new type of unpredictability. But Darwin Project's differences shine best when you run into another player and set off into an epic duel of reflexes. A fight that would usually only last a second or two in another Battle Royale game feels more like an extended chess match in Darwin Project. There are no guns to use, and each strike with an axe or arrow sends players flying backward, allowing for counterattacks. There's a whole new combat language that's fun and challenging to learn, with dodge rolling to avoid arrows, jumping for overhead swings, and so much more. But like most things here, the novelty fades after a few games, and eventually every fight ends up feeling pretty much exactly the same. Darwin Project has three classes that are defined by their gadgets, Jet Wings, Grapple Gauntlet, and Headhunter Drone. With no guns to find, the looting swaps weapon and armor for Darwinium Crystals that are used to craft upgrades for your gear, such as decreasing your grappling hook cooldown or increasing jetpack fuel efficiency. They're also used to equip abilities like Barrier Shields that can give you an upper hand in combat. In this way, mid-game progression resembles a MOBA more than a traditional battle royale since your upgrade path is always the same for each class. Getting stronger through preset menus instead of randomized loot drops might make things more consistent, but it also removes a huge layer of excitement and anticipation, forcing every match to follow the exact same cadence of upgrades and power-ups. Darwin Project also has a survival mechanic, but using the word survival oversells it a bit. In reality, you just need to build a fire every few minutes to make sure your cold meter doesn't hit zero. If it does, then you slowly start to lose health. That's pretty much it. The wood used to build fires is the same wood used to craft shields, arrows, and traps, which means you have to do a small amount of resource juggling, but never enough to make it a challenging or interesting decision. Combat is heavily incentivized in Darwin Project, so it's rare to find a match that lasts over 15 minutes. There are cabins scattered across the zones with maps inside that show the real-time locations of every single player, and you can even inspect the craftable things like campfires that other players leave behind to help track them down. The faster pace and lack of long load screens is refreshing, but winning a match is never quite as fulfilling when you know you beat just 9 other people rather than 99. One big twist, however, is that an 11th player is spectating each match as the director, manipulating the map and aiding players as they watch. The director can choose which zones to close, help players, and even grant them items, so playing well and being entertaining can go a long way to winning over viewers. It's a really clever mechanic, but in the heat of a match, it's not tangible enough to feel any different than if an AI randomized things anyway. And if you're the director, you mostly just wish you were actually playing. Axe kill. Unfortunately, you can only play solo and there's just the one map right now. There's also no battle pass or other list of challenges. You just get one bare bones and easily completed task per day, stacking up to three, leaving Darwin Project severely lacking in terms of out of match features and long term hooks. Darwin Project doesn't properly reward the time you put into it, lacking in both incentives to keep playing and variety when you do. It definitely has a few clever new ideas and combat that's fun, if repetitive, but that's about it. As it stands now, without a battle pass to reward playtime, actual loot to make scavenging more exciting, or additional modes and maps to mix things up, it's hard to recommend over the competition. But then again, games have a habit of changing post-launch these days. For a couple of competitive games that managed to improve after launch, check out our recent re-reviews of Star Wars Battlefront 2 and Halo, the Master Chief Collection. And for everything else, keep it right here on IGN.